You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Halt and Catch Fire After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Halt and Catch Fire After Show. Hey there, Halt and Catch Fire fans. What's going on? We're here at AfterBuzz TV talking about Season 1, Episode 2, F-U-D. I'm Matt Lieberman. Joining me on the panel, of course, all season long, uh, we got Yell Teagle here. Hello, everybody. Isaac Johnson's here. Hey, speaking spillers. Yes, uh, our <laughs> special guest, Jesse Klein, is back. Hey, what's up, everyone? Yeah, uh, and before we jump into it, once again, i just like to talk about Maria Menounos' new book, The Every Girl's Guide to Diet and Fitness. It is now available in uh, bookstores everywhere and on Amazon.com. Uh, it is a great, great book for those of you trying to lose weight or keep it off uh, with lots of great recipes, workouts, uh, and personal uh, you know, uh, notes from Maria talking about her experience losing 40 pounds and keeping it off throughout her career. It's a wonderful, wonderful book, and you should pick it up because it helps support AfterBuzz TV, and we all want to support us. Keep keep the show going. Yeah. Keep it rolling right along. good authority that Lee Pace got his body from that book. Wow, scar, but not the scars. But not the not scars. scars. Not There's the no scar chapter issues. about scars in that book. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, so uh, I love this episode, and I, I hope you guys did too. And we're going to get into that in a second. I want to talk about the title because uh, uh, a few of the folks looked it up, and uh, FUD stands for Fear, Uncertainty, and Doubt, which was the strategy that IBM used in the '80s to crush its enemies, see them driven before them, and hear the lamentations of their programmers. Uh, that's a little a little Conan reference. Yeah, that, was, that was pretty great. Yeah, it was so it's right there and right dropping it. Yeah. <laughs> Dropping, dropping that mic. So, uh, what did we think of this episode? I, I, I was a little concerned after the pilot because, um, you know, AMC, they normally when a new show premieres, they give like the first three to five episodes mm -hmm. to critics for them to review and get an idea of how good the show's going to be. And they only gave the pilot mm -hmm. to critics. So, it, there's a chance that it all could have gone downhill. Uh, but I think this was another very strong installment that continued to raise questions about everybody. What do you think? I liked it a lot. I thought that um, with the pilot, you had a lot to sort of fit in to sort of set up the world. And in this episode, you get to slow down a little bit, but you still get the stakes. I, I liked it a lot. Yeah, this is the kind of episode I'm into, like seeing the machinations and like the backroom things that mm -hmm. are happening. And like, I, I love seeing a guy like scramble and then like bring it all together at the very end. Like that's a, that's a fun thing to see. I love that in the pilot, they were like, here are all these mysteries we're going to set up for you. And in this one, it, almost seemed like they were going to be like, now we're going to tell you. And I remember sitting there being like, no, you're never going to tell us in the second episode. But they gave us like the tiniest taste, which just made me so excited to get the answers. Right. I feel like the lies that we got were were answers in their own right. Mm -hmm. yeah. The fact that the fact that Joe is continuing to lie, and of course we're we're going to get into Joe's big climactic speech further on into the show. Right. Uh, but let's jump in with this IBM lawyer sequence, which uh, you know honestly I was worried you know might take up the vast majority of this of this episode, but they mm -hmm. just deal with it super fast. Mm -hmm. We get out from under it. Um, you know, uh, they dig at they dig at Gordon. They dig at Cameron. Nice dig, yeah. yeah, you know, your failures in this in this area. Do, do they really qualify you to build a computer? <laughs> um, and you yeah, can he, just he doesn't scramble though. I mean, he, he's obviously offended, but he, mm -hmm. he answers it like I know more about this than any of you in the room, which is nice. Yeah. yeah, they they all were on script for it. Like they they knew exactly what to say and just kind of got through it all. Mm -hmm. And Cam Cameron's attitude was so good. Love it. L yeah. Look, Look, I don't need to look at your uh, bios because I'm not interested in copying garbage. <laughs> Best yeah. line yeah. ever. I love the looks on the faces of the lawyers. Like, yeah. how dare you, <laughs> you upstart kid with your with your Lori Petty haircut ten years before Lori Petty was popular <laughs> and your in films. Edgy, edgy look. You're so edgy. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mackenzie Mackenzie Davis said like in, I think it was last week that she says it's Donald Trump hair. <laughs> which, I, I, I can see it a little bit. It's yeah. way more hair than Donald Trump. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a little long. Certainly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
And it's also, he keeps his very, as kempt as possible. She's just, it's everywhere. Doesn't matter, man. <laughs> no? No, man. Just just let that hair fly free, man. Yeah, you know she's a I'm member saying? of the blank generation. Yeah, what, what, what's she going to do with her life, man? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, my favorite part of that, of course, is Joe sits down for his uh, grilling, and all the lawyers are gone. It's just his old boss sitting him down and yeah, saying... Deal. Yeah, uh, and basically saying, like, you know, you may have gotten out from under this, but what's going to stop us from just suing you into oblivion? And, and Joe's like, you see that guy out there? And that's Barry. Barry is our company lawyer. He's our only lawyer. We pay him $55,000 a year. So much money. Yeah, and no matter, <laughs> no matter how much thunder you bring down on us, we will not hire another lawyer. We will ruin his life. And he says it with a smile on his face. He waves to Barry. Barry yeah. waves back. I'm like, oh, my God. Barry is so screwed. Yeah, Barry's real screwed. Yeah. He has no idea. Barry is the Jerry Gergich of this universe. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, he's got balls on his face. <laughs> well, no. Save that. Save okay, the balls okay, for okay, later. Okay. That's a... um, but he's reading a bass fishing yeah, yeah. pamphlet. Fur hunting and fish. fish it's fur yeah. game and fish. Fur game and fish. Yeah. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll get into that in a second. But, you know, Joe basically he throws the, ha the gauntlet down. He's like, look, what we have done is within the bounds of the law, mm -hmm. the same way that Compaq did it, uh, you know, and, and the fact is, you can't touch me, so make a move. Yeah. Not realizing, of course, that IBM has plenty of moves to make, you yeah. big dummy. Mm -hmm. You yeah. don't poke the bear while it's sleeping. Yeah. In fact, they probably already started making moves at this point. Yeah, mm -hmm. I bet they had. Yeah. It just, it surprises me that up until this point, he was like, I thought this, I know what they're going to do. I know how they're going to counter. And then we continue as the episode goes and see that he really didn't think past that point. I think Joe was surprised he was as successful as he was up to this point. Like, oh, he, probably. Think, he didn't think like, he would get this far? Yeah. But he I, at least knew that he, that if he got this far, he knew what to do. Yeah. Well, here's, here's what, I'm going to throw out a theory. Do it. Um, and it may be a little early we're, in the we're episode. Catch it. Um, good. Uh, catch fire. Um, <laughs> is, so I think that Joe didn't think that IBM would do that to him, that they wouldn't raid the company because he was involved. We learn a little bit later on that, uh, his dad is involved with IBM somehow. Mm -hmm. His father, who, as we saw, kind of obliquely referenced in the in the pilot, with uh, his dad's giving him this swing for the fences son plaque that he uses to hit baseballs around his apartment. He's obviously got some major daddy issues. If dad works for IBM, is the president of IBM, is on the board of IBM, uh, it explains, you know, part of the reason why this is so personal. Mm -hmm. Uh, why this is so personal for Joe, and it may explain why he maybe thought that he was exempt from the extreme punishment of IBM, that his dad on some level would respect the balls that he had to go up against his old man mm -hmm. and take his computer away from him. What an interesting theory. I, I like it. Does it have legs? No, I think it does. I mean, yeah. I think that's kind of what it was implied. Yeah. Was that, like, this was him going, because his dad told him to swing for the fences, so, like, obviously his dad was, like, part of IBM when they were, like, being brought up or something like mm -hmm. that. And, like, was, like, is integral to IBM. And so I think Joe is trying to, like, forge his own trail, like, try and figure out who he is as a businessman. And, like, this is all part of his, like, dad issue thing. Yeah. Another thing that that also kind of brings up, because we've been seeing the cracks of doubt start to show mm -hmm. in Joe's facade. Yeah. It's entirely possible, you know, he shows up in that in that Porsche, you think, okay, he is successful. It's entirely possible that he, that he that he never made the kind of money that he says he was making at IBM. He n may not be a great salesman. Yeah. He may be just a guy walking a tightrope act who's been lucky so far. Very lucky. Yeah, I mean, I mean, when he gave that speech a little bit later, it was like so cookie cutter and like, it was like, oh, this guy's just seen a lot of speeches. He's never actually delivered an amazing speech before. And Gordon like, points and, out, yeah, yeah which, which he Gordon flat out stole, like, like a Steve Jobs speech, mm -hmm. and like it, it just felt like real, like zero passion. Like it, it felt like someone who'd seen a lot of speeches in movies and then tried to copy it. Yeah, he knew yeah. the beats to hit. Yeah, he knew the notes to hit. 
Um, and we'll, we'll get more into Joe in, in a minute. I want to talk about Gordon, who at first is having the best day of his life. <laughs> yeah, he is. Yeah. Uh, he, he gets a brand new office that he wasn't expecting. With out a of window. The blue, with yeah. a window. With a window. And a yeah. lamp. Yeah, to potentially the east side of the building. Yeah. I don't know how much light <laughs> there was. Some but, sort of deluxe apartment. I don't yeah. Know. Um, and uh, he's got a light with two settings, on and off. <laughs> oh, so nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Uh, uh, he he gets to the car. He throws on some Boz scans yeah, and he over. hits the road. <laughs> and he's having the best time. And we're like, yeah, get it, Gordon. Look, uh, you deserve it. He's Go, got, buddy. He's also yeah. got good rhythm. He's got the drum on the steering wheel. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? yeah, he may have a second career as a drummer. <laughs> perhaps we don't know that. You know, uh, if there's if there is a company band, if they if there's a company rock band, I think there is. He's gonna be in the rhythm section. Oh yeah, yeah. Sure, totally. Sure. Yeah. Um, and he goes home to Donna to the wife, and uh, she's anxious and nervous. She doesn't know what's ha what's happened with IBM. He's like, you know, I think. I think we got it. He cracks a beer. Yeah, he cracks yeah. a beer. Yeah. No Dr. Pepper. No Dr. Mm -hmm. Pepper. He's having, no. he's having a beer. And he's like, I got an office. She's like, ooh. He's like, I got an office. <laughs> and for whatever reason, this real estate really turns him on. And um, her. And she's turned on by the fact that he's just so, he's got mojo. Yeah. Yeah. He's suddenly, Gordon's got a big swinging dick, and he is not afraid to use it <laughs> on the wife. <laughs> and they go to town. Yeah, man. are the kids home? Where are the kids no, at? The no, kids they're at gone. the Buford. Bam! Yeah, yeah, because yeah, mommy and daddy need mm -hmm. to have some mommy and daddy time. Exactly. He nearly roasted his wife on yeah. an open flame yeah. on the stove. She's trying to turn it off with the with the buttons, <laughs> oh, that which was, was so cool. Was really I cool. forgot <laughs> that they, came, they used to have buttons. Yeah. I was like, she's gonna burn her hand. Yeah, yeah, oh. but she's like very careful to like make out and be like, oh, oh, but yeah. also got to turn hey, off the roast. Hey, honey, why don't you halt before I catch? <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. Yes, I had to do one more. That's, yeah, yeah. Oh, you'll have another. Yeah. Uh, I think that's probably not the first time she's had to turn off a fire while being made out with. I think she was, she was pretty skilled about it. Mm -hmm. Experience there. Yeah. yeah, she knew where the buttons were. It had yeah. just been a long time, I'm assuming. Yeah, that's yeah. why it took her a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Usually she's like. What do you think the the hoister up onto the counter is the Gordon move? Is the Clark original? I think that's like the go-to move of the time. Sure. Yeah. It's like hoist your wife up onto a counter. Yeah. She has to turn it off with the buttons. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It was, was, it was a pretty good ad campaign. Yeah. I gotta admit. Yeah. But, ah, sure. the good old days. Yeah. But you know, as as happens in married life. The, like, <sighs> back to business. So I got to take Joni to the dentist tomorrow. Um, and uh, he's like, well, why don't you come on by to see my new office? <laughs> he's still, he, I think for that entire sexual encounter, he was just banging his office. He was yeah. having sex with his office, oh, yeah. for sure. Which is inappropriate, because Donna is, is a fantastic woman and a fantastic wife. She's she a deserves great office. Better. But did you see the office, please? It was pretty big. Donna has a great office. Yeah, it's woman. The office of his children. <laughs> <laughs> That office works hard at Texas Instruments. It's that a, office makes a great dinner. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. delicious! Yeah. So um, uh, Donna asks him who they hired to write this BIOS, and uh, Gordon gets a little weird about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, earlier on, uh, Joe had revealed his kind of his big plan, his strategy, like, what, what are we doing? All right, now that we're free to go, what are we doing? And he just writes on the whiteboard, two times as fast, half the price. Um, which, you know, Gordon at first is like, that's impossible. But then he's like, wait, that's actually, that is possible. That's, that's a really interesting idea. We could, we, we could really disrupt the marketplace. Cameron's not on board with it at all. They start clashing. And so now Gordon's kind of got a weird on. Now the question is, is it just because... <laughs> He's got a oh, weird, weird on. on. He does. So Trademark. 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 Matt Lieberman. Weird yeah. on. Yeah. Now, is it because Cameron is, as we say so often, so edgy, or two other things? One, um, because his wife is a programmer who gets paid fifteen grand a year. I feel like it's a touchy subject to say we hired a woman and she's getting paid over twice as much as you. Mm who's younger than you, mm -hmm. and you may never reach this same level. I feel like there's, there's, there's definitely some tension on that front, but uh, based on how he, come, how he comes out with it when he does tell the truth, I'm starting to wonder if maybe Gordon had an affair a couple years ago. So I, uh, at this moment where they're still in bed mm -hmm. and he doesn't correct his wife, I was like, ooh, my really outrageous theory from last week yeah 
that maybe eventually he leaves his wife for Cameron. for Cameron. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow, that rears that, its ugly head. I did. I had that thought because I mean I had the thought that maybe they were family or something. And like then that, but and then that adopts later came her up. as his child. In a and weird court case. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. Don't. And then she becomes his butler. So. Yes. Great. Yeah, okay. Because this is a 90s sitcom. <laughs> okay, so. great. No, I did. I had that thought mm-hmm. that, okay, well, certainly the moment her name, or it comes up, oh, he must have got some guy. What's his What's his name? His name is Cameron. Like, you can see the wheels spinning. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, that could be a dude. Yeah. yeah. Cameron's a dude's name. Yeah, Cameron's a dude's name. Oh, he must be, like, what did she say? Like, he must be the real deal. Yeah, he must be the real deal. Like, yeah. You can, he, like, he must... Mm-hmm. He could be yeah. him. I think Cameron. also, you know, Gordon's intimidated by her free-thinking nature and the fact that she wants to do something bigger than just make a better machine or a machine that's twice as fast. She wants to, you know, legitimately jumpstart this PC revolution mm-hmm. and do something spectacular. She's talking about photorealistic screens, like mm-hmm. all the, uh, all these things that, you know, seem old hat to us now yeah. mm-hmm. with our retina displays. <laughs> right. you yeah, know? Well, she's got big ideas. You must be one of those idea people. Or yeah. Says that. yeah. And... I, also, I think Gordon's kind of intimidated that she might be smarter than him. Oh, definitely. Like, might I think, be? Yeah. She's definitely yeah. kind of well, smart. She, she absolutely I mean, is. I mean, but I think that's uh, from his point of right. view. It's like, this this woman might actually be smarter than I am. Mm-hmm. And I think that is something that he doesn't encounter very often in the world. So I think that might be also kind of like off-putting for him. Yeah, that and... Give, and him, give him a semi-weird on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. A, yeah, just a half weird a on. half weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, in any case, <laughs> he lies to Donna, um, and uh, Donna comes in the next day with Joni uh, to see the new office, and she runs into Cameron in the bathroom. Cameron in her army pants and her wife beater and, and her no bra, no bra, never a bra, hair on, hair in pits in yeah. in the armpits She's using the, the male lady, deodorant, yeah. uh, you know, like a real woman. That wasn't yeah. necessarily male deodorant. It wasn't female deodorant. Comes Was there a spray? As well. Okay, I don't know. Well, uh, that's 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 wrong. At that wrong time, with me. at that I time, apologize. it definitely did. I feel like now, everything did. Yeah. I was Tab. wondering, does she? Does Tab she came to, came Tab. in an aerosol. Yeah, you could just spray it in <laughs> your mouth. I don't. I don't think that's accurate. Um, <laughs> does she live at this office? Because I, well, at this yes. point, she's she's changing because her and Joe may or may not have just had a, another encounter. I th- it's left ambiguous. I think. The question is, we never saw where she lived originally mm-hmm. in the yeah. pilot, so I'm wondering if she may be, in fact, homeless. Like, we were talking about, is she just staying there because, you know, she's working so late, it, it doesn't even matter, why would she go home? But I'm starting to think, if she's carrying that big bag with her everywhere, she yeah. might mm-hmm. be homeless. Well, remember in the pilot, she was at school, she was bussed into uh, into this company. Like, she took an overnight bus, mm-hmm. so it's very possible that, like, she took the bus and then like that's it she's been staying at this company the entire time because like she left school she was all oh, right she in, has no she place was probably to live. in a dorm yeah uh and then just kind of left so yeah for sure she doesn't have a home mm-hmm. uh, well i just want to wrap up this this gordon donna bit before we jump into mm-hmm. cameron yeah. um so obviously donna is taken aback um, she's PO'd that, that Gordon lied, but she's kind of keeping it close to the vest, um, uh, in the office. And just, like, the best, like, little supporting character ever oh, man, is this, this friend of, of Gordon's who, who, uh, <laughs> whose wife, uh, and daughter also know Donna and Jody, and he's talking about the do- homemade donuts that are pal! <laughs> and his, like, pink tie and his mustache, I'm like, yes, 80s, I yeah, love it. Stash. Also, mm-hmm. just, like, anything to cut the tension where, like, you can clearly see she's looking daggers at Gordon, mm-hmm. and you got this imbecile in the doorway talking yeah. about donuts. It was amazing. Uh, and then... When when he gets home and she's she's kind of cleaning up from dinner, you, you can just see he's just so pathetic. He's like, "That was great." Like he's just sweating under the <laughs> weight of his yeah. guilt. Um, Gordon it, has no poker face. No, no, none at all. Well, that was great, hon. Yeah. No, let me let me get it. I'll get it. No, let me just let me get. I think Cameron's he, a woman. <laughs> yeah, I think he knows a he's girl. in trouble. He mm-hmm. has the, he has the sense as. Welcome to Married Man Corner, by the way. Um, he has a sense that when you get home, thank you. Married Man Corner uh, yeah. with Isaac Brought Johnson. Brought to you by Maria Menounos, <laughs> uh, the Everyday Girl Guide. Um, so I think that, like, well, if you get home, you know what's up. 
there, there, there could be silence. There could be any, any form of this. And I think he knows. Oh, let me get those dishes, honey. You know, I'll, I'll clean those. I, I got it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but like, but like, but like, like girls smell nice, though, right? They smell pretty good. Nice. 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 Um, yeah, and they also like you to smell good as well. Okay. That's, oh. That is correct. I can confirm uh, that. Okay. Welcome to Every Woman Corner. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Every Girl Guide to Keeping a Wife. Uh, in any case, he, he uh, immediately breaks down and tells her everything. And she's like, oh, I met her. And he's like, well, why didn't you say anything? Why didn't I? And he's like, case. He's like, major point. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I think he's he's definitely intimidated by her. He breaks in, or he sneaks into her terminal when she's not there mm-hmm. and dumps out her whole duffel trying to figure out who this person is. We picked her up off the street and, and gave her nachos, and now <laughs> we're paying her 40 grand and our whole lives depend on her. You know, who is this person? So at this moment, my entire theory changed, uh-huh. and I was like, wait, maybe they don't have an affair. Maybe she's a long-lost sister. What? Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> Sorry, the things that go on in my This head. week on all my <laughs> cult and catch fire. Yeah. yeah, no. I don't think he's, <laughs> she's a long-lost sister. Um, he was snooping through her stuff. Well, she's got a lot of like interesting stuff. Like a brother stuff. would do through a sister's <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Looking for her diary so they can t- tease her about <laughs> yeah. the boys she well, likes. And instead he finds a knife. But- butterfly knife. A butterfly knife. And, and a, a weird-looking doll. And like a handmade doll mm-hmm. yeah. and a bundle of screwdrivers. Yeah. What is he looking for, though? I think he's looking for any evidence that she's not who she says that she is. Um, I think Gordon is somebody who is not used to having any control over his environment, and he's finally getting a piece of it. He's got this office, he's got a title, but he's not allowed to do anything until she finishes this bios. Mm -hmm. So he just wants to know that this isn't all going to go away. Um, I think it's kind of an extreme step to like root through her things, mm-hmm. um, and it kind of makes me like him a little bit less. But I understand why he might be desperate enough to go there. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, th- I think it's just like, I think after this is after they had their big argument, mm-hmm. and like I think it's like just him trying to get some sort of feel who for who she is, like, and instead he just got more questions. Like, a bag full of screwdrivers, knife, and, like, creepy doll does not give you any answers for who she is. Well, it gives us some. But yeah. she's the one who, up until this point so far, has been, like, forthcoming. Not really forthcoming, but she hasn't hid anything. She's been, I'm too cool and edgy, and I'll tell you whatever because I speak my mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whereas Joe is this super liar who keeps everything secret. Right. We should be snooping through his stuff. Well, I mean, Joe's clearly a liar, and Gordon knows it at this point. Mm-hmm. He knows that he cribs from other men's speeches. He knows that he's not necessarily who he says he is. But what he has been upfront with so far and, and been consistent with is that he has a plan and that it's working. So on that level, I think he's, he's won Gordon's trust, at least until the raiding happens. Yeah, and I think also Joe has a clear motivation. Like, you know where Joe is going. Even if he's lying to you, you know his end game. Where Cameron doesn't seem to have as clear an endgame. So it's right. like, you, you don't really know where she is or like what she wants from it. And he okay. also just wants to make sure that he's going to be relevant when she's done with this BIOS. Yeah. He's the one who wants her pushed out the door so that he is the one building this computer. He doesn't want someone to take it away from him. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, and maybe he wants to know if she owns a bra. Yeah, yeah. Well, just well, clearly not. There's no. not one bra yeah. in that. Not, not even one. Uh-uh. Not one. Uh, well, maybe it's that. What you were saying, like he's he can sense that she's smarter than him. Mm-hmm. Perhaps that he has some sort of like, let me find out who she is, and like you say, uh, find out if I have a place in this later. Yeah, it's it's true. Um, so we're we're with with Gordon by by the end of this episode. Uh, well, let's we'll come back to him once once we've talked about it more. Let's talk about Cameron, right? Sure. So she doesn't want to be building some another beige box that just happens to be two times as fast. She came here, she says, because she thought we were going to do something revolutionary. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, she is an idea person. She wants to make something super cool and great. Uh, and as she's introduced to what her life is going to be like, it's honestly very disappointing. Yeah. She's brought by Debbie, you yeah. know, uh, oh, who Debbie. wants to send a letter, love letter to her boyfriend using WordSoft <laughs> um, or what, what was it, WordStar? WordStar. Word yeah. Word yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and she's like, ah, there's no one here who's going to get me. 
I'm stuck in a room with effing Barry. And no windows. And no windows. It was, I thought it said utilities on the It bed. was a utility yeah, closet. Okay. closet. They, they didn't they have enough out. time to untape the flyers. <laughs> yeah. on. They just ripped them off. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. still scotch tape yeah. on the wall. All right, so yeah. it wasn't going crazy. No. <laughs> yeah, I like Debbie, though. I like her like cheery attitude of like, oh, so I can write a letter to my boyfriend? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but funny. it's just... There's it, a sale. You yeah. can get a smart Yeah, it's three oh, for yeah. one. They got good stuff. Looks at her clothes. Mm-hmm. Oh, are we going to talk Debbie. about the, the wardrobe? Oh, yeah. We're going to talk okay. about it. Yeah. Let's wardrobe. talk about when okay. she goes to the mall. So she goes to the mall. She tries on a bunch of heinous clothing. Mm-hmm. And the like look of disgust on her face was the same look I had watching her put it on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The clothing was disgusting back oh, then. Oh, yeah. There weren't a ton of options for women who didn't want to wear like crazy dumb patterns. And not just that. Everything was so... Uh, Constrictive, choky, choky, yeah, and manly cut because mm-hmm. it was the days of women in the office to prove yourself. You have to be a man. Mm-hmm. Shoulder pads. That gross. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. sorry. The whole thing disgusting. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And okay. you need a bra to wear all of those. All of it. And she is not having yeah, that. Yeah, she will not be constricted. I will anything. not be constrained. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You go, girl. Yeah, yeah. get it, girl. <laughs> girl uh, go get it. So instead, she steals a bunch of boys' T-shirts that look great on her. That yeah. look great on her. Um, and as she's as she's leaving the mall, she gets approached uh, by these IBM gentlemen with a proposition for her. Now, before that, um, she abandons her post in the in the terminal. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, she has this tête-à-tête with Joe. Uh, where she gets this pizza as she's like playing punk music super loud in the middle of the night dismantling this computer. Yeah, bad brains. Yeah, and she's just like, you know, like, bad screw this. I don't want to do this. I'm wasting my life with this dumb idea of yours. He tries to sway her, and she's like, you're just a salesman, slams the door. Although I thought Joe's pitch was pretty reasonable. Yeah, he's that, coming at it from a business perspective. That, that if they are cheaper and twice as fast, that means that there will be more computers in more people's hands, and that all of the those innovations she's thinking of will happen at a faster rate because everyone will have access to mm-hmm. the technology. Yeah, but that bores her. <laughs> she doesn't want to wait for that. Yeah, she doesn't yeah. care. Yeah. Um, well, she calls him out, too, on then stealing from uh, Steve Jobs, too. She says, like, oh, you can just steal another quote or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so instead, she goes down to, like, some kind of dank supply closet mm-hmm. that it she like finds. like the basement. It, yeah. looks like, it looks like uh, where they keep the Ark of the Covenant in Indiana Jones. <laughs> well, no, that was like all wooden crates and it was very orderly. There were wooden, wooden qu- crates in the back of that. All right, fine. Closet. But there was also like a chain link fence in the middle. Yeah. And you, there could have been she <laughs> pilfered all of the company whiteboards. Yeah, yeah. she did. There are no more whiteboards um, in that company. Which, education moment for me, was not aware whiteboards existed before I, the 90s. I wasn't either. Actually, I had that thought. I was like, did those exist in 1983? Yeah, I guess they did. I bet they did. Yeah. Um, wrong on our part. Because I certainly remember chalkboards. Mm-hmm. In, in a lot, far more of them. But this yeah. is a tech company, so they were on the cutting edge. Cutting, yeah. okay. And whiteboards okay. were the cutting edge back in the day. Which Dry surprised erase. me why the uh, whiteboards weren't upstairs. Yeah. They were in the basement. Well, either... either well, she stole them. I think she stole them. Then she brought them down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, I thought they were just hanging out there because no one was using them because they weren't being innovative at this company. No. Mm-hmm. She needed someplace edgy to work. Okay. Um, and <laughs> she's chain link yes. right, and she's working out this like <laughs> crazy all the all of this crazy jargon on on these whiteboards. Mm-hmm. And Joe comes in, and he's like, "That's not code. I know what code is. You're wasting my time. What are you doing?" And then she like basically calls him out in a string of technical words that I could not tell for the life of me if she was telling saying something that actually exists or if she was screwing with him. I could not tell. Yeah, I think no she's idea. screwing with him. I think she's screwing with him. She, he says, uh, I know what code looks like. She's like, okay, well, this is clearly not code. I think at this point, well, it's absolutely code. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just more advanced code yeah, than he's than he ever seen is. before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, Gordon's reaction when he sees it later, he's absolutely astounded yeah. at the quality mm-hmm. of it. It's pretty ingenious. You know, she's making all these shortcuts around slower system, uh, you know, configuration mm-hmm. that have been used forever that he's never even considered before. Yeah, it stops she's, him in his tracks. Yeah, she yeah. said something like a left shift. 
Or yeah, like to that. like the it, 138 yeah. triangle blood. I think there was like a niner in there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah tango niner niner. Anyway, yeah. he was like, he was like, you have to get that out of your system. He was mm-hmm. like, get it out of your system. She's like, yeah, I'll get it out of my system. Speaking of systems. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So she starts unblo- unbuckling his pants, and he's like, what are you doing? She's like, I don't want to think about this anymore. And uh, it took me two viewings. At first, I was like, what, is she saying she's been thinking about? When they almost had sex? No, no she just doesn't she want to think to about the bias. Brain, yeah. And that's right. a great way to clear your brain. It's true. Yeah. Release of endorphins, good brain chemicals. So, do we think that they did it, or do we think they didn't? I think they didn't because he got up and put his pants back on. We got up and put his pants back on, and then she was like, Are we doing this? Are we and do he this or what? thought about yeah. it. And then when he comes back, he's like, Yeah, daddy's fixing his hair. Daddy's fixing I- the hair. She goes to the bathroom, completely changes the shirt. Yeah. I still, I still, don't, I still don't think they did it because I don't think Joe has ever like. I think he's backed up. I don't think he's done it ever. <laughs> like, it would explain his constant yeah, aggravation. Like he's just like always like this. I don't think he's ever had it happen. But, well, he had it. He well, he didn't finish. Yeah, exactly. No. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> right. I don't think they did because. Uh, well, I guess sexual harassment laws didn't really exist back no, then. No one cares. Yeah. But I think that he. Uh, <laughs> people care. They just didn't. See uh, right. People. Yeah, I then think he. Didn't I think he didn't. Okay. Um, because he's her boss and he's a good guy, and I want to believe that. Oh, I don't. I do not think uh, that. I do not believe he is a good guy. I think he's trying to be. Because I, I think they will eventually, of course, but I think yeah. they haven't yet, and I think that when they do, we will see it. Because I cannot accept that we did not see it. So yeah. it didn't happen. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I, I think I, yeah. I don't think it has anything to do with sexual harassment, though. I think the reason why he didn't do it was because it was just not an important part of his life right now. He's like, he's shutting that part of him. He, yeah. he shut that part of himself down. I think he, yeah. If he didn't do it, it was purely because he's like, I should. The time I spend having sex with you, you could be spending on my BIOS code. Yeah. Now, that's true. Do yeah. it while I brush my hair. <laughs> yeah. Also, we would see it. It's true. Oh, fine. We'd we would probably s- see But we it. didn't see the Donna, the Donna, Donna Gordon yeah. sex, and yeah. that's the first Donna Gordon sex we've had. We yeah, we had but aftermath. that wasn't as We saw exciting. the aftermath, yeah. yeah. No, I, but I think it would be more cathartic to see, like, a Donna Gordon sex, where it's like these two have been, like, you don't know where they are, and, like, to see that moment of connection would be more important. Yeah. yeah well, How about that, yo? Yeah. He's, he's, Gordon's Does married got, sex not excite you? What? I, Non-Lee Pay Sex does not Back to Married you. Guy Corner. Let me tell you about... <laughs> married no, Guy no, Corner. No, we're not doing it. We're not doing it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh. We're not doing it. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Johnson would probably not agree. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, so, you know, Cameron, obviously, she's tempted, because mm-hmm. this situation at Cardiff is not ideal. Um, they now no longer really have the funding necessary to make this computer happen, and IBM wants to pay her $120,000 to come work for them. That's an absurd amount of money for, for a woman programmer right out of school mm-hmm. in the early 80s. More it, than Barry May. Yeah, way more than twice Barry over makes, twice as much as what Barry makes. This like this cracks. I mean, in, she could buy Barry. In shows like <laughs> she could the, buy two berries. In shows like this or Mad Men, when they when they quote the salaries, we pay him fifty five thousand dollars. I was like, well, that's that's pretty good money, but it's not that much. Well, not Barry. I mean, not now. Yeah. It's not. But well, one hundred twenty thousand. That peaks my interest. I think I think the point was that Bar- they aren't paying Barry that much. Right. Oh, and, that okay. they, and that they can continue to afford to pay Barry that not that much that makes for as long as they need to. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't think it was supposed to be an impressive Ruin number. Ruin his life. Maybe yeah. not. It might have been Im- somewhat impressive. It's semi impressive. Yeah. Eighty three. Yeah. But but I think it was mostly to be like we can afford to keep this guy on retainer for as long as we need mm-hmm. to. So draw it out as much as you want because yeah. we will destroy him. Mm-hmm. We <laughs> don't so, care. But so yeah. Cameron's gonna make one hundred and twenty thousand. Right. Like, yeah. But or, there's, nice. I'm just imagining being in her position, being mm-hmm. the edgy, outspoken girl that she is. Yeah, it's a lot of money, but they're not. They're, IBM is a even bigger corporation. Yeah, they're the not going to let you. Yeah, yeah, you're it's working, really for working for the for man. The yeah. yeah, they're not going to let you walk around without a bra. Oh no, and in camo pants, please. Mm-hmm. How <laughs> distracted would all of the male worker bees be? IBM is the bra of companies. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. It's true because they were keeping us all contained instead yeah. of letting us explore ourselves <laughs> freely. Yeah. I yeah. like I like you explaining why IBM is a bra. Thank you. Yeah, it's important. <laughs> uh, all right, I want to take a second, real quick, and talk about iTunes, folks. Thank you so much for supporting our show, downloading, watching, listening, streaming. You're all the best. Uh, if you get a second, 
you know, uh, leave us a comment on YouTube. We appreciate it. We read them. We respond. Um, tweet at us about the show. Let us know how you feel uh, about what we're doing, what you think about the show. Do you agree, disagree with our theories? And if you want to support us and support all the shows here on AfterBuzz, the easiest way to do it, go to iTunes, rate and review the shows you watch. It's the easiest thing to do. doesn't cost any money. just takes a second. And it helps us get sponsors. It helps us get guests. It's really, really important. It also helps people find the shows. The higher rated the shows are, the easier they are for other people to find and to join them so that they can join the same conversation that you're a part of. So please do your part. Rate and reviews the shows. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, uh, Bosworth, we get to see him kind of like throwing his weight around a little bit, Texas style, mm. after uh, he chased those blue boys out of out of his company, ha, 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 um, in the locker room with his, uh, his buddy Carl. Um, and uh, for, for, okay, until the rating stuff, I caught a whiff of a John Bosworth gay vibe, and maybe it's just me. But he was all up in Carl's grill, you know, playing the whole, like, we went to college together angle, grabbing his, like, toiletry case out of his hands. Just very touchy, very close. And for a second, I'm like, how cool would it be for this dude who is so, like, aggro and, like, Mr. Boss guy Texan to be secretly gay? And I'm like, that would be just such a great twist for this character. I don't. I don't see it. Coming. I did not yeah. catch that. I think at all. he's just. Right. I think at this point he's sort of testing the waters with, you know, hey, we've been loyal to you. You know, hey, I'll just throw that thing in for free. Whatever he said he was going to throw in for free. There will be upgrades. Yeah. Upgrade. Yeah. No upgrade. We want no invoices this time. We just got you. He's trying to fill them out, and Carl gives him mm. two words. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two I, I th words. I think he was being like a little dog. Yeah. Like, like, like we then see like his relationship outside of the company, and the company's big dog. But with, like, this guy Carl, who's one of their big accounts, he's, like, on his every word and, like, trying to impress him and talk about football and, like, He's not a great sales guy. Mm -hmm. And then, like, grabbing his toiletry mm -hmm. case. Like, I think it was, like, I think it was, like, just to establish this relationship where, like, he doesn't have any power and it's just, mm -hmm. like, really hanging on this guy's coattails. Yeah, yeah. reminding him of the good old days when yeah. he used to play football and the quarterback with a good arm or something like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I loved this scene. I just like seeing Bosworth out of his element. Mm -hmm. In the shorts. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah, in those shorts. They were so nothing, short. Nothing mm -hmm. says little dog more than those <laughs> tiny little shorts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just seeing, you know. Band. Yeah, and then yeah. just seeing mm -hmm. him kind of thinking like, huh, at the end, like, that's so strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, by the time he gets back to the company, you know, he's not able to get him on the phone. He's not able to get a lot of people on the phone. What's happening? And all of a sudden we realize, oh, no. Clients are dropping like flies. IBM has undercut their price by three hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. An wow. insane figure. How many Bosworths? Or I'm, I'm sorry. How many berries is that? How many berries is that? <laughs> that is just under six berries. That oh is five God. berries in <laughs> change. Okay. Uh, that is what. That's two hundred and seventy-five thousand. So that's yeah. So that's. Uh, five berries and and a, and a and a quarter of a hundred and a Donna salary plus uh, <laughs> plus ten five yeah. berries and a Donna salary <laughs> yeah five berries a Donna salary plus ten thousand dollars is that to, our new unit of measurement yeah, berries a berry, berry. Yeah. yeah a berry is fifty five thousand dollars <laughs> and a whole lot of sad <laughs> yeah and a whole lot of sad for the balls on berries <laughs> yeah. oh the, the balls on berries face oh man hysterical <laughs> your balls on your face Barry. It was an epic drawing as well. Like, oh, man. Yes. There was stuff coming out of the top of the dick. Yeah. Did you notice? Instead I of, didn't. Instead of like not. doing like the classic side across right, the face. Right, that's what I expected. No, no we went for full the, chin the, balls. The eye, well, no, the I know, eyes balls. Eyes. Oh, eye balls. Yeah. balls. And then went up to accentuate his baldness. It's true. It was yeah. actually very clever because yeah. you never see that. You mm. never see eyeball balls. Yeah. No, <laughs> and, and then he tries to see the reflection in his glasses. And I was like, you can't. That's not how glasses work. Barry. Barry. Silly. You silly Barry. He needs to go get some air and also wipe balls off his face. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Best, best quote of the show. Of mm -hmm. this show, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the company is pretty screwed at this point. They just lost 68%. Of their clients, sixty-eight percent of their of their income, of clients, yeah. fifteen of their top clients, um, 
and uh, it's it's a it's a huge problem. The company will fold in under two months mm -hmm. at their current rate of burn through of their cash flow, uh, which is it's impossible to get a computer up and running in that time. Yeah. Impossible. Um, so half the people in the office are going to lose their jobs. This sunny speech that Joe gave earlier is now utterly BS. What were his and two things? You're going to yeah, have fun, have fun and, and make, make lots, lots of, of money. money. Lot of money. If we do both those things, we might just make a dent in the universe. <laughs> ding. Yeah, ding in the universe. Mm -mm. Yeah, well, and during that, you know, when we lost 15 of the clients, the 68%, all that stuff. That's when Gordon has that question to him. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a plan, right? Yeah. And he just leaves. Like he just, yeah, he the same way they probably him. left IBM back yeah. in the day. Well, we learned that he he caused a lot of damage. Two to million IBM. dollars in damage. Yeah, in their data center. In their data mm -hmm. center, which apparently they got paid off for anyway. So they didn't. Yeah. They had insurance, so yeah. they made out like bandits on it. But uh, you know, Bosworth's in a tight spot uh, in this episode. All right, we got to talk about Joe, right? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> calm down. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you know the cracks in Joe's veneer. Are starting to show. He he walks out of this out of this meeting. He didn't see it coming. How could he not see it coming? And yeah. we have this weird scene where he goes to he sees a, a, a stereo store that's going out of business, mm -hmm. and he goes in and the guy asks says you're a salesman and he he like a like a raw nerve he looks up and like even if he doesn't know that he's angry he's angry. Um, and he compares, and he said, "We're birds of a feather. We're yeah. like the same thing. Your business is going out of sale." Mm -hmm. And he's like, "All right, sell me a stereo." And he's like, "How did you not know? Why is it going out of business? Tell me." He's like, uh, and he starts turning on all these stereos mm -hmm. forcibly, and he shoves the guy, and the little mannequin head with headphones yeah, falls down. Uh, was it wearing a wig too? It was wearing a wig. He was wearing a wig. How strange is that display? I thought this was gonna be a Mad Men moment where like he sees like the little guy like mm -hmm. doing his thing, and he's gonna be like, "Oh, I've got a great idea to save the company," but instead it was turn up the music <laughs> yeah. and just. Screw it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he's just standing there in this cacophony realizing that the reason why businesses go out of business is because you miss something really important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and bef before this, uh, there was the scene in the basement with uh, Gordon mm -hmm. and uh, Joe where there, where Gordon finds out that uh, the BIOS, uh, Cameron has the BIOS. And, like, they're talking about going to jail and they're literally in an enclosed space, like, really put together and uh joe's like i just don't i don't i don't know where she is i don't know where the bios is like, yeah that kind of stuff yeah gordon was like we had one move the move was don't give her the bios <laughs> yeah. that was our move yeah um right before well, right after joe trashes yet another oh that's right he trashes the another supply room. Room. he's, oh, he's yeah. got a he's got a weird on for for trashing <laughs> he for trashing stuff yeah. that's that's what yeah. the relationship yeah. is joe he's and joe and rooms can be destroyed <laughs> he's a uh, this is probably gonna be an outdated reference charles foster kane and just oh yeah, stuff yeah. Up, mm -hmm. you know the greatest room trashing of all time so this mm -hmm. was like a six in room trashing for <laughs> right. yeah it, but, uh, it but a pretty good better. it was better than the baseball he didn't go full kane Yes. He didn't go full cane. He didn't raise some cane. He just raised <laughs> a half a cane. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and in any case, uh, you know, we're now two for two with destroying rooms <laughs> yeah. and Joe. Episode so we'll, three, we can only hope for a better room We trashing. need even yeah. more room trashing. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Joe drives back at probably 90 miles an hour to Cardiff where just coincidentally Gordon has just been staring into space in his car and Cameron comes back presumably to get the rest of her stuff um, and uh, you know he confronts them and he's like a handle we're gonna put a handle on the computer portability <laughs> well he gets that idea because IBM offers him to come back with them oh yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, we didn't need to talk yeah. about that scene I apologize yeah. so yeah so he's in his apartment dejected and uh, his old boss comes back and is like, uh, oh, we just need to settle up. We need to settle some accounts. You have a little back pay, 618 bucks. How's that? Not uh, even a berry. Not, yeah. even, not a, even a berry. Yeah, yeah, not even one tenth of a berry. Like a one sixty fourth of a berry. Yeah, it's not Gross. even one fifty fifth of a berry. It's, yeah. it's some toes of a berry. Yeah. Get a berry um, toe. <laughs> maybe, maybe a berry toenail. Um, <laughs> but in any case, you know, he's like, we, you can either stay here and suck, basically, or you can come back with me. Got a ticket for you and everything. 
business class aisle. aisle. Yeah. yeah, pretty aisle. nice. It's pretty bad. nice. Um, his his dad wants still wants him to come back to IBM. Now, why do we think he went, you know, bananas, trashed the data center, and left IBM without a word? Why do we think? Do we have any ideas? Uh, while we were watching it, I came up with a theory that maybe he's a werewolf. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, or, that... or Batman. He might be a werewolf or Batman. Okay. Batman has more money than him. I All right, think, I'm going to put these down. Werewolf, <laughs> yeah. I'm Batman. I'm going to go with gambling debts. Gambling debts? Gambling yes. Debts. Well, interesting. Interesting. Uh, there's a reason. Okay. Originally, I was going to say a woman, but then I went with, ah, the scars... Gambling debts. Hmm. Mm. Uh, possible. I like this possible. theory, actually. Uh, Isaac, anything? Um, I don't know. I, it, there's certainly a few things in there about, you know, your dad is already disappointed, but he, you know, like he's disappointed. I, I think a lot of that has something to do with trying to prove something to his father and trying mm -hmm. to make his own way or something like that. And also I think he just has such deep resentment for their, you know, terrible corporate culture. Mm -hmm. And he talks about, even in his speech, he talks about how the idea of open architecture in life and, you know, the freedom to, to spread out and spread your wings and go and do great things and, and uh, to not be stuck in society's rules says a lot about who he is. Mm -hmm. And IBM, as we said, they are the man of the man. Mm -hmm. You know, they are the most corporate company ever. Mm -hmm. So to be stuck in that environment and to be pressured to do so from your father who is deeply invested in that, you know, could cause someone to snap. Or just to just deeply resent it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, so they always talk about corporate sharks, right? Mm -hmm. And he's got those scars. <laughs> oh. Maybe there are literal <laughs> corporate sharks that he had to he had to fight in that data center. Lone, so lone this corporate sharks. So this speech. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll come back to the scars. We'll come back to to. Uh, we'll come back. Wait, before yeah. he even gives his speech, yeah. there's a fight. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. The boys which is important. Some... Yes. Uh, he comes what back because it leads to his shirt being opened, and right. it looks like a cape, like Batman. <laughs> <laughs> so he comes back and he says, "Portability. You know, they're going to want to be able to take it everywhere." Again, good idea, prescient. Of course, we're going to want to take our computers wherever we go, and now we have them in our pockets. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, in the form of smartphones, and uh, he says, "We're going to put a handle on the computer," and. And Gordon at this point is so livid, even though it is kind of a good idea. He's like, oh, what a brilliant idea. Guess what? She gave the BIOS to IBM. I didn't give the BIOS to IBM. Big old fight. And then Gordon and, and, Gordon and Joe just wind up in this fisticuffs uh, because yes. Gordon is so pissed that uh, Joe has basically ruined the future of the company, ruined his future. He, you he know, has no plan. He has no He's plan. He's making it up. Yeah, and he, you know, he sold us all a bill of goods, and now we're all going to go down for it. Mm -hmm. You know, how dare you? And uh, they get into this fight, and yes, his shirt is ripped open, stunning Cameron and uh, Cameron and Gordon to discover that he has scars all over his chest, mysterious scars. Mm -hmm. um, and he has this very kind of moving monologue where he winds up even bringing himself to tears. And it's so interesting, you know, the really, really good liars make themselves believe it mm -hmm. in the moment. Yeah. Um, and he's spinning this story. He's trying to get them back on his side. He sees an opening, this opportunity that's about to close, where uh, they're stunned into silence long enough that he can convince them that he's got pain and that he's just like them, mm -hmm. like any great salesman. He's trying to get them to believe we're the same. You know, kind of the same way that the stereo guy clumsily did it in the store. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and he he starts telling this story about these boys who, uh, you know, pushed him off of a roof because he loved Sputnik and they loved sports. Classic. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. We all or know chased him too. off of a roof. Yeah. Sorry. Chased him off yeah, a roof. He said he didn't blame him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was the point in the speech where I went. Because at first he's telling the thing, they chased him off a roof, okay. And then he says, I don't blame them with almost nothing, and, and I thought, like, watching the actor at this point, like, oh, man, he really didn't dig into that. I'm not sure I believe that. And then I started realizing this story is half true. That whole story <laughs> felt so, I was, I don't know why, but I was like, that, he's selling them. Yeah. yeah. This is all yeah. a sale, and it's working because he's, you know, bad Because he's making it 
That too. Because he's making it believable. Yes. The yeah. second half of it, though, I 100% buy. Namely, that this this article did inspire him, mm -hmm. did change how he thought about the yeah. world, mm -hmm. opened his mind up, and made him want and and it made him kind of stalk this guy. He went and he saw him present this computer, and he was you know just as crushed as Gordon to see it not take off because in his mind Gordon represented something very important to him mm -hmm. about the way we should be living our lives maybe that a man can make it on his own exactly you know, yeah. like his dad and all that stuff you know and can make it in any way possible not necessarily in the same way that the last generation made it mm -hmm. um, and also you know he sees in Cameron the fact that she you know she she's not makes threatened by anyone. she uh, she's not threatened by everyone, but she threatens everyone yeah. mm -hmm. just by existing. Mm -hmm. And he makes this point, you know, they should we have to make the changes so that the society has to change to fit our standards. We don't mm -hmm. have to fit theirs. Well, that's the actual quote of the show. But I, mm -hmm. progress depends on changing the world to fit us, not the other way around. Exactly, yeah. you know. And uh, I'm on board with that. Yeah, that that was an actual. You know, he, that was when he was actually telling the truth. Mm -hmm. And you need this. I, I have a feeling that you need this as much as I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All, the, all that felt real. Yeah. So uh, he is able to get them to come back to work. I mean, granted, Cameron never left because she has no place to stay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, they're not necessarily with him, uh, you know, emotionally. He like he goes up to Gordon in the morning like, Gordo, my big old buddy. Yeah, and Gordon doing? shuts the door <laughs> in his face. Um, but they are still on board to make this computer happen. They just have to figure out how. Yeah. Um, and then Cameron comes in and she calls him out on his story being fake. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that Sputnik came down a year before mm -hmm. the greatest game ever played. And we we close on on Lee Pace just saying, Oh, is that like is that is that right? Did I just hit an armadillo? <laughs> 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 it was the kind Call of the back. Same, it, yeah. Right. It was kind of the same. It was kind of the same look. Like it was like yeah. I guess I, guess I did. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I, funny. I don't even remember there being a last night. I just think about the future. <laughs> and Cameron, Cameron, I, she knows obviously the greatest game ever played in the Sputnik thing during the thing. But why does she come back even though she already knows that he's lying? She has no place to stay. Maybe, or maybe she's inspired by somebody with, you know, balls this big. That is just like she doesn't want to go work for IBM. I'm sorry. He doesn't <laughs> had want to the wrong effect on Yale. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I forgot about the. Thing. <laughs> she doesn't want to go for work for IBM because they're just corporate cookie cutter thing. Even though they're yeah. going to pay her three times the salary, mm -hmm. she has the big ideas in the beginning where she wants something else, and she starts talking about all the things that computers can do. And this guy, even if he's a liar, he's willing to go for it. So maybe she'll follow him to see where he's going because she's willing to take that risk. I think you're right. I think that the, the ideas that she has, you know, his ideas, oh, it should be portable. That is the first step, I think, to her being like, well, look at all these other things we want it to do. Mm -hmm. We can do it. And if she goes anywhere else, no one's going to listen. Yeah. Yeah. It's the truth. I mm -hmm. think that. I think also probably because we didn't see this, but one of them has adopted her, and so <laughs> okay. she can't leave. Batman is this adopted like the, her, I can't, she's going to be Robin. I can't figure out if this and, is a plot line to like Mr. Belvedere. No. Or, <laughs> she's going to be Robin. Right. Um, he has a black car. <laughs> do we have any news and gossip? Uh, Ooh, news and gossip. We do have a little bit of news. Right. Well, just that... Uh, After Buzz TV yeah. News. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Critics' Choice named their most exciting new shows, and guess what was on the list? I'll give you one guess. Um, the Strain. I don't know if that was on the list. Yeah. Um, Tyrant. Halt and Catch Fire, <laughs> oh, the little TV show that you should be watching. And if you're listening to this, you probably are watching it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I'm glad to see that critics are recognizing it. It also made uh, Hollywood Reporter's power rankings this week, mm -hmm. debuting nice. uh, at number six. Um, obviously, there's a lot of great competition on TV right now, so that mm -hmm. explains uh, why it maybe isn't a little higher up the list. I'm hoping that it will shoot up higher, um, especially once some of these other great series go off the air. Uh, you know, Game of Thrones only has uh, one episode left, for example. Fargo, I think, is the same situation, or may have even I think it's uh, finished. Dumb. It might have just yeah. finished, yeah. Um, but we're, we're excited to see it continue to go grow, and hopefully the audience continues to, uh, to expand and to find it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to predictions. And now, your AfterBuzz TV predictions. 
All right, so in the preview for next week, we see, uh, what do we see? We see a little bit of Cameron programming. Yep. We see uh, we see Donna lending a hand with Gordon, building, the, uh, figuring out what the architecture of the computer is going to look like. Um, we see Gene Smart mm -hmm. uh, joining the cast, uh, potentially as a guest star, potentially in a more full-time basis. I think... Uh, John Bosworth is trying to get her to invest in the company and invest in the computer. And uh, Joe makes some grand statement claiming that they will make the computer not be more than 15 pounds. Yeah. Damn. A it's very lightweight uh, iPhone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, uh, it's unheard of at the time. Yeah. 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 Um, so, you know. I mean, like, you know, five years earlier, like a really good computer was the size of a room. Mm -hmm. That's true. So, like having a 15 pound computer would be insane. Yeah. yeah. Now the question is, where is he giving this this you know big speech? I'm I personally, I think it's a room full filled with reporters. He's trying to get some buzz uh, uh, for yeah. the for the new computer venture. Potential investors. Maybe. Yeah. You know, you don't or yeah or potential investors. You know, someone who he needs to impress to get the message out that this thing is happening so that they can bring money to the table, that they can make this thing a reality. Uh, if, if that's true, he's definitely saying that without discussing it with Gordon. First. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 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 There, if that's true, there will be a scene with Gordon going, what are you talking about? Right. I think that's going to happen yeah. regardless. Yeah, I think he's sure. when he has an idea, he doesn't say, what are you guys think? He says, this is what we're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also see in that same scene where he, he tells them about the 15-pound computer, he also trashes a computer. So maybe that's going to be our room trashing scene. Yeah. 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 yeah, one trashing per episode. Yeah. One per All right. uh, we, I, we, I predict yeah. that we will find out about the scars and where these scars came from. In the next episode? I, yes. Um, in fact, there is a, a little-known documentary where he, um, he's in this battle, and he ends up fighting like some like orcs or something like that. <laughs> But anyway, I mm -hmm. think that's where the scars come from. I don't, okay, I don't it's from an it's orc fight in yeah. perhaps uh, yeah. The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smaug. Wait, that was a, Middle Earth. You've, heard, you've seen this documentary? Too? I've seen this documentary <laughs> in 3D IMAX, high frame rate 3D. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. All right, folks, I want to thank you so much for joining us this week. Uh, I hope you had as much fun as we did. Uh, we're going to be back next Tuesday with an all new Halt and Catch Fire podcast. Uh, Jesse Klein, where can the people find you? Yeah, you can find me at Jess Klein one on Twitter. All right, and Yell Teagle. You can find me online at yell.tv, that's Y-A-E-L.tv, and on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Google Plus at Yell Teagle, that's Y-A-E-L-T-Y-G-I-E-L. All right, and Isaac. And you can find me on Twitter at Isaac Johnson or Instagram, the Isaac Johnson. You can also check out my album of original music on iTunes. The what? album's called All the Things We Are. All right, great. And you can find me on Twitter at Matt Lieberman. That's M-A-T-T-L-I-E-B-E-R-M-A-N. You can also find all my videos for SourceFed and SourceFed Nerd on YouTube. And I will be launching my own personal YouTube channel on June 30th. You can check it out uh, for talk show stuff, vlogs, sketches. It's going to be a real, real fun time. Thank you all so much for joining us. We'll see you next week. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.